friends, I'm Caitlin Workman and welcome to my YouTube channel where I empower and encourage other photographers. Today we're gonna be talking all about how to create the perfect wedding day timeline. So before we get started, if you guys want to grab a sample timeline, there's a link in the description for a free 10 hour sample timeline. So make sure that you grab that, just hit pause, go download it, because I'm going to talk you through some tips when you're creating custom timelines, but that's a great sample to just have and um, you can start using it today. So make sure that you grab that. The link is in the description and let's get started talking all about how to create a wedding day timeline. I have in front of me just a sample timeline that we're going to talk through, but I think that this can be really intense intimidating for some people and each wedding is different. So I gave you guys a sample timeline to look over, but you don't want to just copy and paste that timeline for every client. Depending on how you do things, your clients are probably going to have a, a different amount of hours based on their needs. Not every client's going to need 10 hours. Some clients might need more. And so you're going to create a custom timeline for each client. It's just kind of a base for you to start with, but there are a few things that need to be included in every single timeline. And there are things that you need to consider. A of course, I would definitely encourage you to work with the planner if um, there is a wedding planner on the timeline because they should create a timeline that, that you can then base your photography timeline around. But I know if you're get to, just getting started, maybe this is your first wedding or maybe it's your first year or second year, you're not always gonna be working with a planner. A lot of the times you are kind of taking on the role of photographer and planner. So you need to make sure you really know what you're doing. And I know it can be kind of intimidating because you probably feel really confident using your camera and posing your couples and things like that. If you don't feel comfortable posing your couples, make sure you grab my posing guide. I'll go ahead and put that link in the description too. Anyways, you should feel comfortable with all of those things going into a wedding day, but you might not really know how the wedding day should play out. And you want to make sure that you are in control of the day and not that the day is in control of you. Yes, you want to make sure that you're documenting the day as it happens, but you also want to make sure that you are proactively setting things up to make sure that you get the best photos possible because you don't want the day to end and you to think, well, I didn't have enough time for this and my client was stressed out during this part of the day and all of those things you want to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing and you set yourself up for success as best as possible now of course things are always going to go wrong and you always have to be flexible with your timeline but I just want to make sure that you are taking control of the day so I would first start by looking at the sunset time for the day making sure that you know when the light is going to end that's a big mistake that sometimes people make is forgetting that there's a lot less sun um, certain times of the year and so you want to make sure that you're planning your timeline accordingly I'm a natural light photographer, so I do use flash for the reception. I don't want to be forced to use artificial light for my portraits just because I didn't plan the time well enough to give me the time that I need while the sun is there. So make sure that you look at that. Okay, so I just start the day with bridal details. I would try to give yourself at least an hour for bridal details. The reason is this is the very start of your day. So if you get there and you have 20 minutes to take pictures of all of the bride's most important details, including the letter that her grandmother wrote and her rings and her shoes and all of these different things, the beginning part of the day is what sets, sets you up for success the rest of the day. So if you start the beginning of the day feeling like super rushed and stressed it's just going to all go downhill from there so i'd encourage you to try to set aside an hour for those details and have a list of things that you're going to make sure you get pictures of and then i would go into bridal prep time so as I'm doing the details, if I see that the girls are like doing something cute, I may snap some candids, but I'm not gonna do getting ready photos until the bride's makeup is done. And then I'll snap a few as the makeup artist is finishing up because they're not gonna want pictures when they have like one eyelash on, <laughs> right? So after your details, you go into bridal prep, which is like finishing touches on makeup, the bride getting in her dress with her mom and maybe putting her earrings in, putting her shoes on, all of those different things. And then we encourage a lot of our couples to do a first look. Of course, your couples may not, may not do that, but if they do, then you're gonna go into first look. Definitely get as many pictures done beforehand as you can. So even if they're not doing a first look, you wanna allow time, plenty of time to get the bride with the bridesmaids, the groom with the groomsmen, get all of those done. And if they are doing a first look, 
you'll do that. And then you can do full bridal party beforehand, but if not, you'll just do that after. Okay, this is important. Make sure that you include um, buffer times. So typically like 30 minutes before the ceremony, you're gonna wanna include like a bride in hiding, bride rest time, where the bride can go like freshen up and get some water, go to the bathroom, do all those things. And you have time to go get set up for the ceremony. I think that a lot of people, when they're first starting out, they have a tendency to kind of like try to squish everything into six hours or five hours or whatever so that the people can save, so that the client can save money by booking a smaller package. But you're really doing them a disservice because you're gonna be rushing them along and you're all gonna be stressed. So make sure you include that little buffer time. And during that buffer, you can also go photograph reception details if those are in the same place. If they're not in the same place, make sure you include time to do that. And then ceremony. I would allow at least 30 minutes for the ceremony, but definitely talk to your couple beforehand because if it's something like a Catholic mass, you're gonna need to allow an hour instead of 30 minutes. Definitely talk with them and figure figure out how much time you're gonna need for a ceremony. Then after the ceremony, we always do family portraits. We schedule about 30 minutes, even though it doesn't typically take us that long because we have a really great system for that, which I have another video if you guys wanna watch that you can and see why we do them so quickly. But you're gonna go into family portraits and we schedule about 30 minutes. And that's just so that you have time to like hurt everybody, get everybody together, all of that stuff. And if you finish up early, you just have extra time for a couple portraits. So whether the couple does a first look or not, we do just married portraits right after family portraits. And this is because even if they chose to do a first look, they have that fresh just married joy that you really wanna capture. And yeah, then you do reception coverage. So you go into the reception and the reception timeline is kind of just go with the flow. You're just there ready to take pictures and be there when they need you. Make sure if there is an exit that's being photographed that you include that in your timeline as well to make sure that you can photograph that. So that's kind of just a glance over of what a timeline looks like with us. Obviously there's a lot more details, a lot more things that go into it. If you wanna see um, a picture of what that looks like, then like I said, just go to the link in my description and download that sample timeline and you're welcome to use it to edit it however you need it. But I hope that that was helpful. Like I mentioned, you really wanna make sure that you have a timeline that is gonna help you give your clients the best experience possible. And so I hope that this was helpful. And if you guys have any questions at all about that, please just leave them in the comments and I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys.